Howdy folks, we're going to look at installing the tools that we need here. And so first, you'll need a GitHub account. That's a free account. Uh, you don't have to pay for anything. It gets you set up. Again, that username is public, so pick whatever you want here. And then you'll download the GitHub desktop client. So I'm going to hold Control and click, so it'll launch in a new tab for me here. You'll do the download for Windows. Now, I already have this installed. It doesn't really uninstall well, um, so it's a quick download. Not too big here. You run the installer and it'll ask you to log in and the login process will actually take you back to the website, which will take you back to GitHub. You have to click like, uh, like, yes, I want this to, to launch this particular program. It goes pretty quick there. Once you've got that, uh, we'll look at this when we do our um, Git exercises next video, but you want to have that downloaded. Uh, and then the OpenJDK again, we can wait till we get to the second half of the semester. So I'm going to do NetBeans and XAMPP. So from NetBeans, you want to go to download version 13 is the latest here. Uh, I prefer the installer version, again on Windows, Linux, or Mac, either one's fine. Uh, you can use the zip binaries if you want, but then it doesn't usually put like a shortcut in your start menu and things, so I think the installer's a little easier here. And then for XAMPP, um, you want the latest version, so 8.1.5 is the latest here for Windows, again for Linux and for Mac, just pick your own version here. Um, one of these here, which one was it? Uh, it doesn't say. Uh, depending on which Mac you have, if it's running the, the new M1 chip or not, um, one of these two versions is better than the other, but they look the same, which is really weird. Um, they used to have like a different name. So if you're on Mac, let me know if you're running any issues. Give it a try. Yeah, probably under the FAQs here. Let's see. Yeah, the regular installer. Okay, so yeah, you're better off with the regular installer there. All right, cool. And then once we got those ones downloaded, um, I already pre-downloaded them here, so it goes. It's going to go a little quicker here. We want to run. So let's do NetBeans first, and I'll get NetBeans going. And it does a little prompt. Yeah, we'll accept. Oh, it uh, doesn't have the JDK install. Okay, NetBeans is an IA, so we're going to need the JDK here real quick. That's annoying. So if you do the official Java install, you don't need to do this step, but I prefer the open JDK. So let me come in here and download this one real quick. So we'll go to the download section, jdk.java.net for version 18 here. And I want the Windows, so it's just a zip file here. And this will download, and then we're going to extract it. Now, the way that this is set up on the virtual machines, and I think it works out pretty well, is there's a folder on the C drive called open dev. So I'm going to go to my open dev folder. Now let's see, I think I've got that one here already. Yep. If you don't have one, you can make one here. And this is where I'm going to extract that open JDK. Give me just a second for that to finish downloading. And then this one, I'm going to want to open the file here because it's a zip file. So I'm going to open the folder, not the file itself. And then I'm going to right click and say I want to extract. Let's extract all. And then I want to change this location here then to be that open dev folder. I'm going to extract it to open dev. Okay, so it's going to take all the JDK stuff that we need and download it here. Now, the annoying part with the Apache installer. So because it doesn't know where Java is installed, we have to go tell it. So if we run that installer again, it's going to give us this warning. It'll say, hey, we don't see a Java install. So tell me where you want to put it. And to do that, you have to tell it with this dash dash Java home. So we can do that. So I'm going to open up Terminal here, or your command prompt, whatever favorite uh, command line you have. And then I'm going to go to my Downloads folder. So we'll go CD to, I want to go to Users and Eric and Download. So if you type a couple letters and hit Tab, it will automatically take you, or like autofill that location here. So to Downloads, or you can also do this tilde sign there. Tilde is like your home directory, and then DOW for Downloads will take you there. But lots of shortcuts. You, you don't need to do much with the command prompt here. Uh, but if you run into troubles with the installer, let me know. Happy to hop on a screen share with you here. So from here, I want to run the Apache installer. So I'm going to do APA to get Apache. Look, I've got all these old versions out here. Here's version 13. So Apache NetBeans version 13. Ready to run the installer. And I have to tell it Java Home. And I'm going to tell it where that is. So that's C colon open dev and then JDK 18. So I'm going to tell it, hey, this is where my Java, oh, Java Home sorry, is. So now it will install. This installer is really dumb and obnoxious because it actually asks for this later on. There's a prompt, 
you can go find here in a minute where you can plug in that information. So I, I wish this would be fixed. Um, that would be nice, but you know, it's not too bad. We'll, we'll install it once here, uh, and then it's installed. Or if you already have the official Java install from Oracle done, you won't even need to do this step. But I just I like to avoid the Oracle ones because it irritated me. Right here is where you tell it where the JDK is. I don't know why it can't just automatically do that for you. I'm going to do the same thing. You can leave NetBeans and program files if you want, or you can put it over in OpenDev. Um, I like everything being all together, so I'm going to put it in my OpenDev folder. Totally optional. doesn't really matter much here, but I just like having it all grouped together there. All right. Now NetBeans is installing. We'll get this one going. Oh, my little kitties are out right now. The kittens. Ouch. Ouch. You can't climb up my legs, sweetie. And they are small and cute. Um, they're four or five weeks old. We're not exactly sure. My son found them two weeks ago out in the garage, all cold and hungry. So this is Stella. Stella, can you say hi? Say hi. I know. Say hi. Hey, okay, you don't want to play? Okay, but you can't be up here right now. You can't be up there right now. I know. I know. Hey, sweetie, you go play with your brother and sister. Go play with them. So there's three little kittens running around my office here. This, mine has the door that closes uh, to keep them out of trouble. But they like to climb on my legs now. It does not very, work very well with shorts. All right, it's almost there for NetBeans. And then again, you can start that XAMP download if you haven't yet. I've got this one downloaded already. That one will go pretty quick. We'll get these installed. Yes, just a minute, Stella. Just have to keep my legs off the ground. Okay, cool. So this one's done. We're ready to go there, and then we'll go back over to our downloads, and we, then we can do XAMP. We'll do the XAMP install. Say yes to the prompt. I know, Stella, just a minute. So this, again, is going to give us our, our list here of tools. Apache. So MariahDB is essentially MySQL, the MySQL, PHP, and Perl. We're not going to use Perl here. Uh, so XAMP does not like to install in program files because program files has all sorts of permissions issues here. So it's going to install in a different location. It should have put it in C colon XAMP. So we need Apache. We need MySQL. We don't need the FileZilla FTP server. We don't need the Mercury Mail server. You can uncheck them if you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, the send mails are fine for faking send mails. Um, it's not going to hurt anything to be there, but you don't need to install them. And then C XAMP is where it wants to install it. So this is just the root drive and it makes its own XAMP folder. That's fantastic. Oh, mine's not empty. I went and uninstalled it here, but this is for so I could do the demo, but apparently it didn't actually delete it all. Let me go and empty that out real quick. So C XAMP. Okay, I'll dump that folder. There. And try it again. Okay, great. And it's going to install. This learn more here launches the website. I forgot to uncheck that box. That's fine. You can just close it again. Not important. Then we can actually install it here. Okay, so we got all those installed, or almost installed. This one is doing its thing here. So while that goes, we're going to fire up NetBeans here. NetBeans, and mine was 13. I don't actually have 12 now. NetBeans 13. Oh, come on. It just installed NetBeans 13. There it is. The uh, start menu search is a little suspicious. Uh, no, I don't want to import anything. All right, so here is NetBeans. So the first thing I want to do is go to my options here and turn on a dark mode, because this is really ugly. So under appearance, you have a look and feel. I want to use the is it dark metal or dark nimbus. One of these two is uh, usually a little better here. Let's see if we can check out which one is which. I was going to have to restart for the look and feel. That's fun. Okay, Click here to restart. Yes, click the button. Maybe it'll restart here. There it goes. It's closed. Stella, you have to wait, sweetie. All right, back to NetBeans. All 
All right, make sure this starts up. And XAMPP is still going. All right, there we go. Now we got a nice little dark mode set up here. This is much better here. Okay, so NetBeans is ready to go. When we go new project here, we'll be able to start a PHP project here in a minute. So there aren't any plugins yet. So you say click next to activate it. You go next, and it's going to go install the PHP plugin that it needs. You might have to click download. Um, this was a fresh install, so it probably just comes with it here. It'll just activate those plugins here. Now it's saying, well, where do we want to put our projects? So we don't have everything actually officially installed yet, but in that XAMPP folder here, let's see, see XAMPP, it makes a couple of folders. There's one called htdocs. So htdocs is the main folder where our PHP programs are going to be served from, from the web server. Again, we'll talk all about that later. Don't worry too much. We're just trying to install some tools here. So if I put a project, a PHP project, inside of that htdocs folder, we'll be good to go. And let's call it project one. That's great. And this is a local website running on the local web server. There's a bunch of other things we can do, but that's our easy testing version here. Our project URL, HTTP colon slash slash localhost slash PHP project one. So PHP project one is the location to where it's going here. And we're actually going to change this from localhost because when PHP installs, it tries to use port 80. So if you haven't taken a networking class, don't worry too much about it. But we use different ports to communicate for different things. So port 80 is the default port for web traffic for HTTP traffic. So by default, XAMPP tries to run your Apache web server on port 80. So on my computer, because I do other sorts of development work, I already have Windows has their own in, um, web server called IIS using port 80, and they like to fight. So I need to change it from port 80. So I change it to something called uh, port 5080. So I'm just going to put in here colon 5080 for my port number because I need to change that in a minute. Let's say next. We don't need any frameworks. We'll go next. We don't need any composers. We're good to finish. It's almost done installing everything here. We're getting there. We'll have to do a little bit more configuration, and then we'll make sure we're up and running. So I'm going to shrink down this view. If you haven't used NetBeans before, it's a pretty handy tool. So the projects view over here on the left shows us our project and all the files inside of it here. Right now there's an index.php file. And let me zoom this in a little bit here. Oh, uh, there's no zoom. Hang on. Uh, it's options. Maybe I just need to make the font larger. Yeah, here we go. We'll just up the font size. Let's go... Um, maybe size how about 18. Is 18 a little better? Is that? I think that's a little bit easier to see there. Uh, I'm gonna go maybe go one higher here, just to make sure it's not too bad. Let's go size maybe 20. Okay, size 20 I think should be pretty readable here. So, and again, the web development course, uh, HTML course or JavaScript course aren't prereqs either which is a little funny, uh, but that's okay. So this is basically all HTML looks like everything you would have seen before. Here's a little comment we don't really care about. Um, we can get rid of that one here. But you'll see there's a section here with a less than question mark PHP, and then a comment, and then a question mark greater than sign. This is a PHP code block. So again, we'll get into what some of that stuff means later. Don't worry too much about it. Uh, but in here now, we can actually put PHP code and have it do things that PHP does. So we're almost there. We just need this to finish installing here. And then we'll try out our first page here. So I'm actually not even going to bother putting anything inside the... Oh, we can. We'll put it inside. We'll say echo. And then we'll say hello world. Because everyone does hello world as their very first project. And we use semicolons in PHP. So we're going to echo hello world. And then when this is processed by our Apache web server, it will run the PHP code and spit out this as HTML. So we could even put it in HTML if we wanted. We could have, say, like, maybe make this an H2, a nice little header line. Let's do that. That's probably a little prettier here. Slash H2 and end of the H2 header. And if it doesn't make a lot of sense, don't worry. We'll copy all the examples out. Um, there's not a whole lot of, like, web stuff we have to do front-end web stuff. All right, we're almost there. We'll give it a save. Um, I do control S for save all the time. Sorry, you can just come up and file save. So if you change your file, you notice it changes to bold here. And then once you save, it unbolds because it's been saved. Uh, just a, a little tip there in NetBeans here. All right, almost there. And then I do, you can pick which browser you want here. So or you can use your IDE's default browser. It's generally ugly here. I don't like that. So I'm going to change it over to Firefox because I prefer Firefox. I use Edge a lot as well here. 
Um, but this way it'll launch it on a, not the default browser, which is probably going to be ugly. All right, almost there. Let's see, what's this? Yay! All right, we're configuring XAMP. And is it done? I think it's just about done. Not too bad. It's almost there. So next week, when we get into chapters one and two, we'll talk more about some of this PHP stuff. Um, but for now, we're just going to start with the basic echo. We just want to make sure that we can get our project up and running and get it working there in uh, with, Wix, with XAMPP on our Apache server for local testing. Again, the focus of this is on local development, um, actually deploying stuff out to a production web server out in, in the internet somewhere is, is ever so slightly different. We'll, we'll look at a couple steps. We don't do any of that because we haven't done any web server administration. There's a whole other class we could take for web server administration and managing that. So this focuses on just local development and how we can write code to do server side development work. So all these PHP sites here are processed on the server, the web server side, and then they send data back to the client. So all our HTML pages go back to the client. Uh, almost, all right, there we go. And yes, we want to start the control panel now, finish. That wasn't too bad. So the XAMPP control panel. Now here's where we need to change this. So if you don't have IIS up and running, you don't have to change a thing. But for me, I need to go to Apache and go to config. And I want to change my Apache httpd.conf file here. Really big and ugly. Don't worry too much about it here. Uh, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit here or you can search for it, but it says, hey, what port do you want to use here? So port 80. I don't want to use port 80. I want to use port 5080 here. And then I think there's one other place. So I'm going to search for 80, one other place here. Here we go. And then change this one to 5080 as well. So the two locations here for 50 and 80. I just did a quick little search. So I changed that in the Apache httpd, httpd.conf. Then I can start it up, and it's even going to tell me what port it's running on. So it's saying it's running on 5080, and also says 443. 443 is the secure port for using TLS or SSL security. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So it started green, no errors. If you run the errors, let me know. Happy to hop on and help. But now if I just go to my localhost page, so if I click on admin here, it's going to launch me to localhost, but it's not going to have the 5080 port. For some reason, this is really dumb, and you have to fight with it all the time, right? This takes me to IIS. I can go to config, and I can change ports, but this doesn't actually work, because, again, I don't know why. It's failing somewhere, which is really annoying. Yeah. Can't create the file. But then it actually does work, which is super weird. So then when I click admin, it takes me to the right port. I still haven't figured it out. It, it drives me nuts here. It just doesn't have the right permissions somewhere, but it should. Uh, but, so I just put in port 5080 if I need to. So if I get here, localhost, and nothing's there, I can go colon 5080 to change the port number. No, nope, not PHP, my admin, sorry. And this will launch you to the dashboard. So if you got the dashboard page, everything's installed, up and running, version numbers. We don't have our project yet. So now I want to try and run my project. I'm going to hit run on my project, and it's going to launch localhost 5080 slash PHP project 1, and then it'll find the index PHP page, and we see hello world. Now, if I right-click and I view my page source here, notice that PHP code block is not there. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. All I see is the hello world H2, right, in the heading, heading two, header 2. So that PHP code on the server is read and executed, and then this part is not sent back to the client side. So this operates only on the server side. Okay, so what I could do then, uh, the next part and what we're going to work on for our first lab exercise, so out here... It's actually a discussion. Uh, it's our first lab. So you're going to partner up with somebody here. So you go to lab one here, and you're going to introduce yourself to the class by 5.15, so it's the, by the end of Sunday, to make sure everyone gets a chance to post first. And then you know, tell us what times you're going to work on the class, so maybe you can find a partner who has similar availability. Then you're going to find a partner. like Reply to their thread and see if they want to work together. And then working together, you'll make sure you both get the tools installed. Um, just two heads is better than one, so two of you can work together, make sure you each get the tools installed, and then while you're working together, ask them a couple questions. Ask them their name and major, reason for taking the class, any previous programming experience they have, do they have any hobbies, do they have any plans for the summer, anything else they want to know, and then for testing to make sure the tools work, we're going to make a PHP website, our index.php, and introduce our partner. 
So I don't have a partner here, I apologize, but I'll just answer these questions for you folks here. So I'll put this in here. So I'm just going to echo out, um, uh, I don't know, just name Eric Janeski, and then I'm in the automotive, uh, what is it, doctor of engineering, engineering in automotive systems and mobility is the name of the program I'm in. And then I'm um, taking the class because I'm the prof. Proof prof. There we go. Right, That's uh, not very interesting. And I'll enter that down so it doesn't trail off too far. Okay, that's question one. And then all of these are actually going to run together here, right? So we can put in a little uh, BR break, line break for each of these, because otherwise it's going to be a little funny. It'll all run together here. So then I'll do another echo, another break. So previous programming experience. I've been programming for 15 years, sure. And then we'll echo another break. And any hobbies? I like playing Dungeons and Dragons. And echo. Uh, having plans for the summer. Hoping to adopt baby number seven in July, mid to late July. We'll see how well that goes. Um, Nothing ever goes like officially to schedule, right? So we'll see. Uh, and then anything else you'd want to know? Uh, I'll, I'll say I'm training for my ninth marathon. I run the Free Press International or Freep International in October. The beautiful race you run over the Ambassador Bridge, back through the tunnel. Uh, super cool here. No, none of this really needed to be PHP code here, right? This could have just been plain HTML, uh, but it's good to make sure we can get PHP code working and executing on our computer. So I'm going to run it again here, and now we'll see. Here it is. Again, I've got the line breaks in here, so we'll see them all, and we should be good to go. So for your discussion, then, you'll just copy-paste this whole HTML page as a reply to yours after you found a partner. Uh, that way, you've got a chance. You met somebody in the class. You both made sure your tools are up and working, um, and then you posted your very first PHP page. Okay? Um, PHP page is redundant. Sorry, the, the definition. What does PHP mean? The originally stood, no. What? Personal home page. Yeah, now it's hypertext preprocessor. Hypertext preprocessor. PHP hypertext preprocessor? Yeah, I think it's PHP hypertext processor because. PHP. Yeah. Oh, that's why it's recursive. Okay. These definition programmers are weird people. So um, that's PHP. All right. So that's installing the tools. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Uh, if not, I will be seeing you on the discussion board. Take care, folks.